Children's. No, I'm kidding, I'm not really Moate. Though the makeup might have been a nice touch. I am Funky Monkey, and I welcome you to my house of love. Now, I don't like to bring politics into the show, because I happen to think that it's counterproductive. And I feel that you should really want to intrinsically better yourself. Finally got it working! Hey, Funkmeister! I recognise that voice. You should. After all, we lived through uh, Harry Potter and the Foblet of Gaia, uh, the Goblet of Fire, together. Uh, by the way, I hope you're fine. You didn't look too good last time. Oh, yeah, 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 no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Long story, really. A short version of it is, uh, the magic sense Dunbridge coming, decided to do a runner. I had to get a magic ring together to get it to hold its nerve. But, you know, that then kind of backfired and, well, like I say, it's a long story, though. Upshot of it is, I've got a new pendant. <laughs> anyway, my friend. If you would like to reintroduce yourself for those who are new to the channel. Indeedy. I'm Captain Kevin Nathan Cat, commander of the starship USS Dragonfly. Fly. <clears throat> Finally, we managed to, to hook up to your so called uh, internet and let it work with our Starfleet tech here. We're up and ready to join the fun, aren't we, uh, Lady Bat Agatha Silverbird Sinclair? Yes, we are. Um, but why are we doing this? Well, um. Jill finally got us through the internet. We can join reviewers now. Imagine Funky Monkey, Linkara, if he lets us. The Dom! Guys, if guys, he lets us. not that I wish to impede you at all, and congratulations on managing to navigate the perils and pitfalls of technology, but. kinda got an episode planned here, and. Uh... Okay, sorry, so, sorry to disrupt your stream. Jill! Uh, ready to nix the connection in uh, three... Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's not exactly what I meant. Um, that, what I meant is, uh... I haven't had, like, a crossover in ages, and seen as you're here and all, how would you like to christen that connection by helping me review the new Ghostbusters reboot? They... did a reboot? They sure did. Why? I mean, what was not right about the flick with Bill Murray? Well, they wanted to do a third movie since long time, and it fell to producers and Hollywood. Anyway... Released in 2016, Ghostbusters is once again the tale of a trio of paranormalists thrust into an approaching apocalyptic event. But this time, they're women. And of course, they enlist the help of a fourth member, a Subway Kaios girl who knows a thing or two about the history of New York. But this movie was beset by hatred and reactionary negativity, even though it gamed a respectable 73% on Rotten Tomatoes. But is it really as terrible as Real Buster 76 thinks it is? Let's find out! So strap on your proton pack, straighten your overalls, and get ready to meet a fantastic female foursome of... Ghostbusters! Meet Erin Gilbert co-author of a paranormal research text that she desperately wants to forget about. Which is why she visits the other co-author, Miss Abigail Yates. And Yates's research assistant, Gillian Holtzman. And off to the Eldritch Mansion. Wait a minute. Mansion? What? Why? Well, you see, Erin wanted to be taken seriously. And seeing as he co-wrote a book on the paranormal, that doesn't really lend itself to being taken seriously. So she went to see Abby to get her book taken off the internet. But when Abby heard that the Aldridge Mansion had been haunted, well, she had to go and see this for herself. Now the haunting of the Aldridge Mansion had been shown in the pre-intro, but we had to skip it because YouTube. Oh man, YouTube. I heard so much about it. At least it is a platform that people can use, but people are telling me that the algorithm was broken. Yeah, it's really not a platform that's conducive to video reviewers anymore. I'm thinking of moving off it, but I've got to explore my options, yeah? Anyway, onward! Things are about to get spooky! 
And the rest of the situation doesn't bode well for Dr. Gilbert's tenure case. And Yates and Holtzman are kicked out of the college too. Oh, when will the study of the paranormal get its due? Probably never, because even if they come up with evidence, it'll just be dismissed. Or supposedly debunked. There's only one thing to do. Go into business offering professional paranormal removal. You'd think that someone would have had that idea already. Yeah, well, it's pretty involved stuff. Heavy tech, I mean, nuclear and the like. Hard to miniaturize. Plus, of course, you start asking for nuclear materials in the Cold War era and people are going to start looking at you sideways. Anyway, we now direct our attention to one of New York's many subway stations. Only authorized people are allowed on the subway tracks. And ticket assistant Patty finds some decidedly unauthorized and unliving trespassers. Back at the new HQ, we meet Kevin. Ah, Kevin. Pretty boy. But not very bright. And Patty goes to the fledgling busters with her sighting. Which is the perfect chance to test out the prototype proton pack. Which actually works. Do you see that? Do you remember the time when I got to shoot my first phaser? Don't remind me. I think the wall at Stafford Academy's shooting range still has that hole. And after a few tweaks, and a new set of overalls, the busters head for their next call at a rock show. And it isn't long before they find the ghost. Trapping it, however, is a little more difficult. But they manage it. <laughs> and all to impress noted skeptic Martin Heiss. Dr. Martin Heiss. Professional skeptic. But would he truly be happy to be proven wrong? Or is he by this point merely trying to preserve his own brand? Their demonstration, however, goes about as well as you'd expect. Well, he got what he wanted. That he did, Lady Agatha. That he did. Which leads to another House of Love top tip. If you must show off your latest spiritual acquisition, the House of Love recommends transparent aluminium windows in your ghost trap. The busters are summoned to the mayor's office. Ooh, cool. Did they get... The key to the city? Already? Sadly, I'm afraid not. Correct. They're told that they can receive no official support. You let one ghost loose, and wham damn thank you ma'am, you lose all your official funding and support. They can't lose what they didn't have. Good point. But these incidents are all related, and all through one man. And he doesn't take kindly to the Ghostbusters interfering in his work. Oh! Live free or die trying. And for Rowan North, death is only the beginning. And poor Kevin. No, not Kevin. It's what I always say, the Kevin dies first. And Rowan reactivates the device. Bringing hell to New York. Hell to New York, yeah? Uh-huh. Where's the difference to a normal Sunday afternoon on Fifth Avenue? Probably less slimy and less ghosty. Good point. And so the stage is set for our finale, as the busters ride into a deserted New York intent on ending this madness. And the girls clean house. Yes! That's how you take down the ghosts! You've got Holtzman, suckers! But there's still the little matter of the man or ghost, behind all this madness. Rowan still has one final trick up his sleeve. This is what probably annoyed the fanboys the most of all. That they took the beloved icon of the original movies and turned it into this film's villain's final form. The bad guys always come back once more. Let's hope the bastards are up to the task. Well, you've no need to worry about that, my friends. Yeah, so Ecto-1 got carjacked by a ghost, but now they're luring the ghost in Ecto-1 towards the vortex at the centre of all this madness. And they hit Rowan where it hurts. Oh, 
right in the was names. That's what you get for trying to start an apocalypse in New York. Then again, you get it twice as bad in Birmingham. <laughs> but oh dear, Rowan grabs Abby. And Aaron's to the rescue. She dives into the spirit world and recovers her friend. And loses her hair colour. White as the new black. And so our movie ends with Kevin holding a sandwich. And the Ghostbusters moving into a more fitting premises. So that was the Ghostbusters reboot. Opinions then. Who'd like to start? Hmm. It wasn't half that bad. Half that bad? I would say it was a perfect third flick. There are hints that something like that had happened before. And all of this would happen again? If we are lucky. Because if they would do a second new Ghostbusters flick, I would watch the hell out of it. Let's be honest. I don't think why people don't like that film. I think I can see a reason why mostly the male variety of the Ghostbusters fans would not take that movie as another incarnation or version of their beloved franchise. Or the guys, uh, well, kinda, sorta, stupid. True. And the girls are the ones that kick ass and take names. I mean, there are some things that are not that great. The slime farts, sh and dick jokes in the first half? Indeed, but after the film is done shoving icky stuff in the actresses' faces, the movie starts to get really good. Mm -hmm. So is this just a rehash for the SGWs? Heck no. The flick is way too politically incorrect for that. And what, and what do, do you, you say think about, about the movie, movie Funky? Funky? This is the divisive, supposedly unwatchable, supposedly insulting, much-hated reboot of the much-loved franchise. But you know what? I'm gonna be controversial, and come out in favour. So let's get this out of the way immediately. There is precisely one joke, the fake EVP that came from the front, that I would cut up completely. And there are a couple of scenes that are kinda cringeworthy, even after a third or fourth viewing. And if you were looking for a misandric message, you'll likely find at least one, especially in the extended cut. But the performances are good. The Busters, McCarthy, Vig, McKinnon and Jones really build up a rapport, and Chris Hemsworth shows off comic timing that will serve him brilliantly for Thor Ragnarok. Singularly, Kristen Vig's sincere, awkward Erin Gilbert, so desperate to be taken seriously, so intent on playing the game, only to lose it all in a single YouTube video. Which brings her to Melissa McCarthy's Abby Yates, who doesn't care so much, and Kate McKinnon's Gillian Holtzman, who is, let's be honest, scene-stealingly crazy, and quite the best thing about this movie. And of course, the tough yet loyal Leslie Jones's Patty Tolan. And the villain! Yes, this one has an actual living villain! Neil Casey's Rowan North, who is played up as a weirdo, but never really comes across as anything other than mildly unnoticeable. And yet, he manages to pull off the cold rage of a man who has taken the flack of human vermin for all of his life, and become convinced that the whole thing needs purging. The flow of the movie is upbeat, filled with gags and slime. It's a different energy to the boys of 84 and 89, but it's still a smooth A to B kind of flick. Something strange starts happening, three scientists form a paranormal research group, a fourth member adds something extra, they manage to stop a supernatural threat from doing really bad things. And I saw this movie in 3D at the cinema, which only added to how much I was blown away. The effects work in this movie, by design, is what makes it. The ghosts are horrific, demonic, and the climactic giant representation of the spook from the famous logo actually looks like he's made out of sail fabric. And the greatest joy of this movie? The fake cinemascope, which makes effects that stray outside the frame much more effective. So is it a perfect movie? No. It's damn good, and the main foursome have great chemistry, and the vast majority of the comedy really hits home. But it has flaws, the EVP joke, the angle that the mayor's office isn't officially on side with them, the missing dance scene that they cut for time, and the over-explained parts from the extended edition. But this movie has received far, far more hate than it ever deserved. If you're looking for an action comedy that not only passes the so-called Bechdel test, but also does justice to the franchise to which it belongs, who you gonna call? So thank you to Captain Calvin Cat and Lady Red Sinclair for joining me on this damn fool outing. 
Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Live, Live long, long and, and prosper. prosper. And thank you to my audience for watching. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you didn't like it, then they're not all like this. This episode is very much an anomaly. So I encourage you to like and subscribe and share too. And if you still feel raw about me liking something you don't like, then you can always become a patron and ask me to review something that you like. Crowdfunding links are in the description below. Anyway, for all my co-hosts, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days and great entertainment. And hey, don't have nightmares! <laughs>